Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for February 27, 2012. If you'd like to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, go to the address you see on screen, stockscores.com slash newsletters.asp. Let's get into the analysis like we always do each week. This week's topic is no news is good news. The market tends to price in economic change about six months before it shows up in economic numbers. And that means if you wait to hear about the news, you are usually too late. It is better to watch market activity to tell you what is coming in the news for the future. Now here's a good example. Today the market was propped up by pretty good earnings from the home builders, or good news out of the home builders anyway. Some economic numbers from that sector were positive. But you can see that this move really started five months ago. On screen now I have a chart of the home builders ETF, symbol XHB, which bottomed at the start of October in 2011. Now the blue arrows show you breaks of downward trend lines. That's one of the key things I like to see. The one on the left is a break of the first steep downward trend line. The second one is probably a more reliable break because not only did it break a longer term downward trend line, but it also was breaking from a rising bottom. Either way, just using this chart got you into the home building stocks either five months or three months earlier than what we are seeing in the news releases these days. So today we had great news out of the home building sector. The market told us about that some time ago. And that's why I say reading the news is never good news because it's always too late. All right, well, let's um, get back to the market now. Everyone has been calling for a pullback, but really the market does not agree. I'm seeing all kinds of commentators talk about how the market's uh, had a great run on light volume, it needs to pull back, and so on and so forth. But remember, the market is looking ahead. Commentators, when they look at the numbers and the different things that they are using to make their evaluations, they're looking backwards. And so again, we want to ignore the news. Here's a chart of the S&P 500, which has had a great run since the bottom made in October, and it is now closed at a new high for the last year. You can see that we've been tickling up against that red line of resistance for a week or two, and today we actually broke through that after opening very weakly, the market came back strong on that housing news. The Toronto Stock Exchange is also breaking through some resistance. It hasn't performed as well as the U.S. market, but with a declining U.S. dollar, this market should do well, given that commodity stocks typically rise in a declining U.S. dollar environment. Here you can see a chart of the U.S. dollar. I use the ETF UUP, and I've shown here on the chart the falling tops from left to right, January and February. Those falling tops are a sign of pessimism. Now, we are at support, very short-term support on the U.S. dollar. I think we could see a little bit of a bounce here in the next few days, and that may see some profit-taking in silver, gold, energy, those sorts of sectors, but ultimately it looks to me like the U.S. dollar is lower in the weeks to come. The fear index, the VIX, is remaining in that downward trend. It had a little pop uh, this morning on some worry out of Europe, but again, the market sort of shrugged that off and the VIX declined for most of the day from the open. Uh, gold is in an upward trend over the last two months. It has also broken its six-month downward trend and really showing some optimism because of those rising bottoms and showing that the long-term upward trend line, which I've drawn here over the last year, it remains in place. Oil has had a pretty good move here, uh, really stronger than you would expect given the state of the economy and the gradual improvement of the global economy, and that's because of political tension in Iran. Now, if those things get cleared up, oil will fall back into an optimistic pattern. The reason it's in an optimistic pattern is because the economy is getting better. It's just that oil is getting ahead of itself because of those Iran concerns. So generally speaking, then, I'm, out, uh, I'm bullish on everything, U.S. stocks, Canadian stocks, gold and oil, but I do feel that there is a potential for a very short-term pullback, not really a trend break, but asset prices are in uptrends, and so we don't want to be chasing the high flyers. We don't want to chase the stocks that have gone up for some time already. What we want to do is find those stocks that are just starting new upward trends, and there's plenty of those around still, and that's where we want to place our bets these days. We'll have a great week in the market, and trade well.